Welcome to Try with Ping. This is Ping Robert, and in this podcast, we will cover a range of different topics from culture, languages, and underrepresented stories. Join me with a cup of chai and listen to these stories. Welcome back to Try with Ping. In the last episode, that Sean and I we talked about his bilingualism and how he、um, learned Mandarin Chinese in the states and how his experience are with those languages and different cultures. And in this episode, I'm so happy to have him continue to talk about his identity and race. So let's dive in. Well, I mean, for one, I am Asian. The other half would be, you know, I was raised in partly in American culture, or I, I grew up in an American culture, so it wasn't something that like I had a choice in really. It was like I was born into it, and at home it would be, you know, my or knowing that my parents are Asian as well, you know, this is part of who I am. This is the world that I am living in, and this is the body that I am experiencing life through. Through the eyes of an Asian person.、Mm, thank you, and I guess my question around that is because right now we're here in Colorado, and you also spend most of your time growing up here. But Colorado, Colorado is probably has like what five percent of Asian population, so even less for Chinese or Mandarin speakers, right? Then so. I felt that there must be. I I don't really know. Like, what is your experience being, being in this predominantly white state in Colorado? Ah,、uh, you definitely do feel. At least I do definitely feel like there is. You know, I feel different from other people. But the difference between you know when I was younger compared to now is that you know I fully embrace the fact that I am Chinese. I am proud of that. I am proud to say that, like you know, I have a culture that adds to white people's culture. I suppose, I suppose, not adds to white、uh, a white person's culture, but、mm-hmm. more of like I'm able to impart a lot of different experiences and values for people that aren't Asian. Essentially, I feel、um, that you want to add that diversity into your culture.、Mm-hmm. Yeah,、um, so you say that you you feel different in Colorado, right? But like, when is there an exact moment that when you found out that oh, I'm different, I have a different race than my schoolmates or than the rest of the people around me? You know, it wasn't so much a time of when I suppose. Well, I guess I could say that I, I felt it a lot more from middle to high school because that was like, yeah, that was like a Pretty transformative time in my life, and so I think also just understanding that you know because I was Asian、uh, and everyone else was white, it's like I moved into an area of my neighborhood that is pretty much white. A lot of white people, not very many Asians, although that number has increased over the years in my area, which is pretty good. But yeah, you know, like ever since we moved to Colorado. I attended a Chinese church, and so a lot of the time joining the youth group there was, you know, I'm with a bunch of other Asian Americans, like like other people,、um, yeah, with the same similar identity. Yes, very、yeah. similar identities. You know, like being able to have that, I felt like I belong. Like there are other people that understood my experience. It wasn't just like a bunch of white people in in a youth group. It was. Everyone was Asian in our youth group, but they were mainly English speaking, also Chinese speaking as well, of course. But you know, I didn't feel like I didn't belong. I felt like you know, these are people I can get along with. These are people that I can relate with. You know, this is where I kind of divided my life into two. Where it's like I had a I had a church life of like friends that were Asian Americans, and then I had I guess I wouldn't really say like close friends. Uh, in school, they're just more like classmates. The reason why they're just classmates was because you know I found it hard to make friends that I didn't know how to relate with. It's like everyone here is white, predominantly, essentially.、Uh, and I just was like, you know, like I don't know what to talk about with you guys. 
you know, it's, it's kind of weird, you know, like I was in a place of like, do I really want to show my Asian-ness either? Like, is that, hmm, not sure if I want to do that. And I think it was for fear of like letting my culture, or I guess being embarrassed, definitely feeling that embarrassment of like, oh, you know, I don't feel like I belong here. Mm -hmm. And if I were to step out and show that part of me, I think it, it would be made fun of because, uh, you know, as I was in school, I have been bullied before. It was like, you know, like when you're bullied, you don't want to, you, you continue to hide yourself more rather than just letting yourself be known. I have a question. Can you tell me a little bit more about the experience of being bullied? Um, when, when was it and what exactly happened? I think it's more, I suppose this isn't really to do with my identity as an Asian, more of like just as a teenager. Being a teenager, you know, back then, like it was, it was hard for me to relate with people that weren't from my background. And I think along those lines too, it was like, you know, I had different interests as well. I wasn't very social around my school classmates. People would try to reach out, but I'm just kind of like, you know, I was also in a place, I think in, in middle school, from middle school through half of high school, you know, I was also in a place of depression too. Definitely something that affected me, that prevented me from stepping out. You know, it was all stuff that like I didn't realize in the moment. It was more after the fact that it happened that I think about it. And I'm like, I was in a depressive state at that time. You know, I think if I, you know, like when I was there, like I, I think having the experiences of bullying heightened those and just gave me the message that, you know, I don't need anyone else. I don't need friends. I don't want anyone else. It was hard for me to trust the people in school because like, you know, I, I was bullied before. These people look different than me. And they're treating me this way. So I, I don't feel like I can really trust them. So from what you're saying, I understood that um, the bullying might not necessarily to be related to your race. However, you cannot connect very well with your schoolmates because of um, the differences between you and them. Yeah. And how many Asians were in your school at that time? I want to say like... <laughs> Like when you walk around the uh, hallway and how many would you actually see? Maybe like one out of 10, two out of 10. I would probably say like maybe two out of, two out of 10, maybe two, two out, out of 10. 10. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. No, 20%. actually, no, no, no. 20%. I feel like is a little too generous. I think it's definitely lower than that. <laughs> maybe like 10, 10 to 15%. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember last time when we chatted and then I was asking um, this racial proportion uh, thing, like ra how, how much ratio it is in your school. And then we kind of come to a metaphor. It's almost like a, ri a bowl of rice and then you sprinkle several um, sesame seeds on it, like the black sesame seeds. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <But> good, <laughs> yeah. That's and pretty much the, how it is. Yeah. And maybe not a black sesame seeds because we're like more towards more the brown ones or maybe white sesame seeds, but definitely not as white as the white rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Ah, yeah. I, I can't imagine how difficult it, it was for you during that time not finding your group of people or friends. Yeah, so a lot of the time, my group of friends would actually just be church friends because they were, they were similar to me, my background. They grew up like me, essentially. They were born here, too. Or if they weren't born here, but they moved here when they were really young. So it's, it's just easier to relate with, with them and build connection. And it wasn't until like, you know, it wasn't until high school. So there's a really interesting trend that I, I find with my high school experience is that my academics were really great beginning in ninth grade. And it slowly started to decrease as I went and finished high school because uh, for the first half of high school, I was like, you know, I don't need anyone. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't care about my social life. Like, I'm just here to do work. I'm just here to finish my classes, do well, do all these things. <laughs> but after the first half of high school, I was gradually essentially creating a social life for me within school, which is great. Mm -hmm. It was like I could finally start to say that, like, you know, these aren't just classmates of mine at least the people that I hung out with. Yeah. There are people that I could connect with a bit more. 
with other interests, a lot of other things that, you know, we got into, you know, video games a lot of yeah. the time. Some of them were like also orchestra people. Uh, yeah. What did you and play? I played violin. Yay. Well, so. that's just something I didn't mention in the intro. So someone <laughs> plays violin. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. So <laughs> still pretty well, pretty talented for me. I mean, I, I can never play violin. But then so that that's what you're saying. You say that your academics were pretty high, but as your social life goes up, then your studies goes down. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, but I think at the end, it's still a good thing, right? Because you were able to make friends and to find maybe a little, not complete, but like um, a little sense of um, belonging. Yeah. Yeah. I am interested to know how, what kind of space will make you feel that you belong? Because I, I mean, you know, identity or race and anything, I, every, a lot of people or it, you and I were just looking for some sense of belonging. And so how does that look for you? I think this is something that is constantly changing. But I think finding it, from what I've realized nowadays, has actually just been realizing that belonging is something that you kind of believe yourself, is that, you know, I am here on this earth. I do belong here. And, you know, and for the most part, it's... Yeah, like there are going to be times when you don't feel like you belong. But I think the, the circumstances and the criteria for belonging has, I guess, become more of like a, if you exist in this world, like you do belong here. Yeah, and that, that's a very general way of talking about belonging, I suppose. But if I'm, if I'm going to talk about specifically what makes me feel like I belong is, you know, the people that I'm surrounded with the people that I'm with, that I interact with every day, the experiences I have every day. And I think that speaks a lot into, I suppose, uh, my upbringing in, in the church as well has definitely been very influential and life-changing. Yeah. I'm talking about knowing who God is and who Jesus is has always been something that I think has kept me grounded, especially in the very dark and stormy parts of my life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, especially in the depression period of time that I was in, that has always been like a, an establishment for me. Something that has kept me rooted and grounded is in knowing Jesus, is in knowing that, you know, despite the world turning its back on you, the world being, you know, the people in your life who have treated you negatively, either from your friends or your family or just strangers or whatever like knowing that jesus thinks of you differently and that like he says that you do belong in this world you know i love you and i love you enough that i'm dying on the cross for you and that as simple of a message as that is has so much impact on this world today it's always it's always a topic of controversy you know it's because it's it's super bold and it's super Cool in that sense. I'm willing to do this for you because I believe you're worth it is what the message that Jesus has shown me. So yeah, I think that's definitely a really big part of my life. Fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, I think I can I can relate to that, especially for you know bilingual people or bicultural people, immigrants and all that. Sometimes it's really hard to really find an intersection uh, with people, um, especially when you're probably not surrounded by the people that are similar to you. And in the sense of longing your heart, that kind of pushed you to find like more of an internal sense for for your life and the meaning. Um, and and I hear that you found that sense of, of belonging in, in your Christian faith. Yeah. I also think that helped me connect with other people as well. Like, because mm -hmm. back then it wasn't very much like I connect with anyone aside from, you know, like, oh, you're, you're Asian too. I'm like, oh, you're also American. Oh, like, let's be friends. <laughs> Um, but it started becoming more of like, oh, you were a believer as well. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, let's be friends. <laughs> yeah, it kind of just turned down like that eyes into in, into a, a conversation. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. Very, very cool. And 
Well, I don't really know how to conclude this episode because what you have said is just truly inspiring for me because I have been very interesting in, especially Mandarin speaking immigrants or、uh, Asian Americans who, like, because I I moved from Taiwan to here, like it ha- has always been kind of like an imagination, or. You know, when I was growing up, and then you guys, <laughs> when I attend those English camps, you guys, people like you guys, came from the states to Taiwan, and I was so inspired, and I want want to learn as much English as as possible, so then I can talk to people like you guys, because、mm-hmm. in my mind it's like、oh, they look like us, but they were brought up in the states, and they speak English so well. I want to be like them, so. So I just do want to encourage you. I I mean maybe during that camp that some some kids are just frustrating, but you might not know how much impact you have made on on them. Yeah. And and just to show them another phase of, uh, you know, phase phase the physical phase that are on on our body. It's just like we might look the same, but we don't have the same culture. We don't have the same background, but we can still come together and and just. Integrate all the good ideas to to create more stories. Yeah, yeah, and then and then I think that's what is beautiful here in the states. It's like a lot of people with different cultures. They can come together. They might not need to change, or they can change a little bit, or they can completely change. But all these cultures and languages just kind of happened here in the society, and then we get to see many different aspects of. Of human nature, yeah, yeah. So once again, before we、uh, end this episode, Sean has written some of the poems, and then he put it up on nightanddaring.com. That's his website.、Um, is there anything you want to add, <laughs> Sean? No, no, I, I don't think I do. <laughs> is okay. Wait, wait. I have a one last added question. What、oh, are the、too. tips? Um, you will give to other Asian Americans to for for their identity or sense of belonging. I think being open to the fact that you have another identity, honestly, yeah, being open to it and also exploring it, I think that is really important because you know if you're not exploring it, you know you're going to continue asking these questions. Experiencing these things that you don't know why, I think being able to discover, like seeing it as a process of discovery of yourself, you know, knowing who you are, definitely builds up more confidence. Definitely、um, gives you more awareness of, you know, why things are the way they are、uh, when you interact with people. Yeah, that that's definitely a, a big. Tip, I suppose, is just being open to the process of knowing yourself. Beautiful, yeah. Probably just embrace the whole process, not being one or the other. Be both. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you for coming to chat with Bing. Yeah, thank you, Bing, for having me on this the podcast. Thanks for listening to Chai with Bing. Let us hear your voices and stories. Please share this episode, like, and follow us on Instagram at chai with ping. You can also email us at chai with ping at gmail dot com. Till next time.